<laughs> Welcome to English Country Life. This is the second in our series of the chicken year and we're moving into March which is incredibly busy. So join us and I'll take you through all of the tasks. Welcome, my name's Fiona. We have got a lot of work on with the chickens this month. It's incredibly busy. Here in Lincolnshire, we've got very, very high winds. and We've had a number of storms. So we're on storm watch and there's a number of things we do to make sure that we're prepared. And we had one particular storm, which was quite bad. So I'm going to show you what we did for that scenario. We have got the fertility test results that we started in February for the potential breeding cockles for this breeding season. And we'll show you how that worked, what to look for with fertile and non-fertile eggs. We also want to make sure our hens are in tip-top condition for this breeding season. So we're giving them a prophylactic worming treatment this month and we're on high alert. Oh, licorice. And we're on high alert for potential mites because the weather's warming up and red mite, northern fowl mite and chicken lice are a higher risk of any chickens catching those. So let me take you through the month and let's start. Here in the UK, we're moving into the spring season and we have had storms at the back end of February and it's likely we'll have more storms and high winds because that's the norm here in the UK within March and April. Now the main enclosure that the chickens are in, so Mr White and all of his hens are absolutely perfectly okay in the main enclosure. That 21 metre by 3 metre enclosure is pinned down with three foot row pins and it's got high hedges on both sides. So we believe that that enclosure is perfectly safe. Mr Black with Bramble and Rhubarb however, a whole other story. They're in a greenhouse at the moment and we do fear in very high winds that that glass could shatter. So when we see high winds and storms forecast we move them into this and all it is is a large coop with a large run. And I say large run, it's larger than most that would be attached to a coop. So it's actually two metres long by three quarters of a metre wide. And that's more than is legally required for three little chickens. But we're a little bit uncomfortable. And let me show you why we're uncomfortable with this space, because I want you to see what three little chickens can do to a run of this size within a 24 hour period. Before I show you inside the enclosure, I want to show you how we started. So the coop and run were actually in our garden and this is the lovely green grass we've got there. There's no bald spots. It's just wonderful carpet of green. But let me just pan round inside the run and bear in mind this run is three quarters of a metre wide by two metres long and the chickens were only awake for 12 hours while they were in here. They had 24 hours in total but of those 24 hours, 12 of them were in the coop and they've destroyed all of the grass in that run in a 12 hour period. Now there is a small patch of green that you can see there but it's only survived because a drinker was on that space and this is just an illustration of why we like to keep our chickens in much much larger enclosures. You might have noticed that this coop has been secured by ropes over the top of the coop and the run and those tied to some quite serious stakes into the ground. For most storms in the UK this wouldn't be necessary but at the end of February we experienced a storm with gusts over 70 miles an hour here in Lincolnshire and over 100 miles per hour in other parts of the UK. We wanted to ensure that the coops were not going to be blown over or moved in those storms. So this was a very, very simple solution to the problem. In the last segment, you'll have seen Mr. Black separated from the main flock. And the reason for this is that we're testing his sibling, Mr. White for fertility. In February, Mr. White was the only cockerel with access to most of the hens. After a week, we started collecting eggs from the hens for the first of two separate tests that were run one after the other. The eggs were placed in our incubator and incubated for seven days before candling. Candling sounds really complicated, but it's actually very simple. This is our candler. It's made by Titan. And I think you can see from the faded box, we've had it for a very long time. And that's because it's incredibly reliable, so we've never needed to replace it. 
The candler is a sturdy base unit with a rubber ring that the egg sits on. Press the switch and it turns on a bright light that shines through the egg. That allows you to see if an egg has begun to develop, essentially if it's fertile or not. Let's have a look at the candler in action. The eggs that we're going to be looking at have been incubated for seven days and let's start with an egg that isn't fertile. The yolk appears darker at the top of the egg and here the vast majority of that egg is made up of the white as a light space. If an egg is fertile, the volume of this light space will reduce. Let's have a look at a fertile egg. The proportions of dark versus light space have significantly changed and this is what we're looking for to prove Mr White's fertility. So what were the results? In his first test, his results were 13 out of 14 of his eggs were fertile, so around 93%. And for his subsequent second test, 14 out of 15 eggs were fertile. Mr. White has successfully earned his place as our breeding cockerel for 2022. March is a month when we prophylactically treat the chickens for worms. There's two times where chickens should be treated for worms. The first is where you see evidence of worms. So that might be their eggs or the worms themselves in their droppings. So that's something to check for when you clean out the coops. If they've got gape worm though, you might see the chickens gasping and you can shine a torch down their throat and see if there's any little worms in their throat. If you see any worms, they've probably got gape worm. So again, they should be treated for worms at that point. The second time to treat chickens for worms is a prophylactic treatment and when we first started out it was recommended that prophylactic treatment should be carried out twice a year so we went for September and March. September because you're coming into the colder winter months and we wanted to make sure the chickens were in their best condition before the weather got much colder and we would treat again in March because we breed buff Orpingtons and we use the broody tendencies of the, of the Orpington hens so they will actually incubate and hatch the eggs for us, sitting on the nest for 21 days and during that time they don't eat as much so they lose quite a lot of body weight. So we would prophylactically treat in March so that the chickens again were ready for that brooding period and were going into it in the best, po best possible health they could have. In recent years though the advice has changed and rather than treating twice a year the advice is prophylactic treatments should only be once a year. Now for most people, if you are keeping chickens for egg layers or you're keeping them as family pets, September might be the right month for you. But for us as breeders, we're broody hens, we're going to treat ours in March. That's our selected month. There's two types of treatment that you can actually give to your chickens and please ignore Nugget behind me who is having a bit of a moment because she can see me sitting here talking. So excuse the noise. So there's two types of treatment out there. There is the natural type and there's the medicated type. Now the natural type appeals to a lot of people, but there is a downside with it. Natural um, liquids that you apply to their water essentially make the guts of the chicken inhospitable to the worms and their eggs. It lowers the risk of the eggs and the worms taking hold. It doesn't stop them, so you can still get worms. And the other thing is that if you do get those worms, it doesn't kill them. So the only way to make sure that any eggs or worms within the gut of your chicken are got rid of and killed is by uh, adding a medication. And the most common medication is Flubinvet, and that's what we use. Now in the UK, we've got a massive advantage because we've got two manufacturers, Haygates, and marriages who actually coat their layers pellets with Flubinvit in the right dosage. So there's no guessing, there's no working out what you should actually have in terms of your Flubinvit dose compared to the feed that you're administering. It's all done for you. All we need to do is take this great big sack of feed, remove all other foodstuffs that the chickens can access, so that includes their treats, and give them this for seven days. Now during the seven days of treatment and seven days after treatment has ended, any eggs which the chickens lay need to be removed. So there is an egg withdrawal period, so that's the only downside. But 
it is a very, vet, very effective worming treatment. If you're in another country, you can still get Flubin Vet, but you will have to mix it with your feed yourself. Now, in terms of treats, there is something you can still do, although you have to take everything else out. So no wheat germ, no mixed corn, nothing that you would normally give them as treats. You can give them these layers pellets with the Flubin Vet added with some warm water added to it, make up a mash, and the chickens think they're getting a treat because it smells slightly differently, differently to them, the texture's different, and they absolutely love it. So you can still give them that as a treat. And that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next seven days. What I need to do now is go and empty their feeders completely and put this Flubin Vet uh, coated pellets in their place. March is the month when the weather warms up and the risk of horrible bitey little insects increases for your chickens. So we're now on high alert and we're carrying out weekly health checks. There are three little bitey things we're actually looking for. The first is chicken lice, the second is northern fowl mite, and the third is red mite. And they're all slightly different, so let me explain. Chicken lice is the first one, and those are a little, a little um, crawly thing, which is tan coloured, and they have very long abdomens, so they're quite distinctive if you do see them. Where you would find them if you do a health inspection is round the vent of the chicken, or in the fold of the skin between their legs and their body. So those are the two places is to check. If you've got chicken lice too, chicken lice will lay their eggs in the feather shafts at the bottom of the feathers around the vent. So it will appear like a, a grey powdery deposit. So that's something to look out for. Now, if you've got northern fowl mites, just like chicken lice, those live on your chickens full time. <laughs> and you'll see tiny, tiny black or dark brown dots around the chicken's vent or in their folds of skin between the legs and the body. You can see there's a theme coming up here. So those are the areas really to check for all these bitey crawly insects. Now, if you happen to have red mite, they're slightly different. So they're nocturnal and they will bite your chickens at night. But during the day, they will hide in crevices and cracks in your coops or any structures that you've got and there is a myth that they don't infest plastic coops but they absolutely do so the coop is the best place to check for red mites but if you check the chickens at night you may see the, the crawlies on them at that point so how do you treat them well, there are powders which you can add directly to your chicken's body and basically you'll dust it on and then give it a bit of a rub. And you can add diatomaceous earth to the bedding, but just be careful with the diatomaceous earth because it is a carcinogen both for yourself and for your chickens. So use it very sparingly. Now, the powders that are added to the chicken's body, actually to be safe for the poultry, are more of a deterrent for the little mites rather than actually killing them. One of the only ways we've found to fully get rid of lice, red mites and northern fowl mite is to use something called ivermectin in a 1% solution. Now I do have to say this was recommended to us by a vet in the UK. However, it's not licensed for poultry. It is licensed for other birds. So if you've got pigeons, it's licensed for them. And you can buy the liquid with a dropper quite easily from uh, many of these veterinary sites. And if you tell them you're using it to treat poultry, I've never yet been refused the ivermectin. And all you do, you use it like a spot on. So with the dropper, you put some of the drops onto, directly onto their skin. Normally I go for the shoulder blade just behind the, the neck and it's absorbed into their bodies, goes into their blood. And when the bitey little insects go and suck the blood at night, they take in the ivermectin and they die within 24 hours to 72 hours of it being administered. And how it should be administered is one drop per 500 gram of chicken. So you'll need to to have a look at the weights of your chickens that you have based on the breeds and administer the right number of drops. But it is incredibly effective. It does work very, very well, but it does need to be administered three separate times. So in seven day intervals. So you administer it once, wait seven days, once again, and then another seven days. And there is an egg withdrawal period as well when you're treating with ivermectin. 
So you would have to discard any eggs laid during that period plus seven days beyond the last treatment too. And then you can start eating the eggs again. But that's the best way to treat it. It's the most effective way. And Taffy here has been very patient, being a wonderful model for this segment. Those are all the tasks which we complete in March. So you, as you can see, it is very, very busy. If you have liked this content, take a moment and give me a thumbs up down below. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, come and join us. Hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified of every new video as soon as it goes live. If you've got a question for us or if you've got an idea for another video, just leave it in the comment section and we'll get back to you as soon as possible or even make that video. But for now, thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.